Welcome back to Learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to create a slinky. Also heard the term ellipse worm or circle worm, so whatever you want to call it. It goes like this, let us create an ellipse first. I click on the X and then I hold shift and click on a black color swatch. So I've got a stroke color and a fill. Now I go to path and stroke the path. Afterwards, I'll select this node right here and use this function to break the path at the selected node. Let me turn off the snapping and I reposition these two nodes. So you can see that right here. One a little bit inwards, the other a little bit outwards. It's still selected, path and break apart. Let me delete this part. And once again, I give this one a stroke, no fill. Let me reposition the node a little bit. So this is our starting element, and all that we now have to do is to press Ctrl D for it. Let me re-enable the snapping. And I drag this copy out of there holding Ctrl, but I want to make it snap, so I need the snap to pass active as well. And now these two nodes, they snap, and that's the way I can connect them. Now I just repeat it, so I select what I've got, I press Ctrl D to copy it, and I drag the copy out of there and connect it to the node. At some point, the snapping might not work that well. Just deselect it then, and then reselect it and try again. Sometimes Inkscape has a little bit of a glitch, at least my version. Try to connect it to the right node, or you've got an overlap, like I did right here. So let me press Ctrl Z and I reconnect it. Now it's fine, but there's a little bit of an angle. So let me rotate it, so double click on it and use the selection tool. I don't want to have it as horizontal as I can, but don't worry too much about it, we're going to transform it anyway. Let me press Ctrl D and I copy this element and then I go to path and combine. And now I'll use the Bezier tool and create a path. I simply left click, then left click and drag these handles to create a curvature. So the stroke is a little bit thin here. Let me go to object fill in stroke and I'll make it thicker so that you can see it. You don't necessarily have to do this, but for this tutorial I have to so that you can see this curved line. And I want to have this element on top, so it needs to be in the hierarchy on top of our curved line. Then select it both, go to extensions, generate from path and pattern along path. The default should be fine. Check the live preview. And then apply it. So I've used repeated here in the drop down and snake as the deformation type. If you've got that selected, it should work for you as well. And now all that we need to do is to select the line. So let me drag this one down. And we can delete the line. Another way to transform it, let me copy this one, I press Ctrl D once more, and I combine it on the path. And now I'll go to path and path effects, click on the plus sign, and you can use the bend effect right here. Just use this node tool. And afterwards you can copy that, reconnect it, and you can create a longer slinky if you want to. I think the first method is better, but there are always many ways in Inkscape to achieve the same results. You can also give it a gradient, like I did in a thumbnail, but make sure it's a gradient for the stroke. So use this function, let me drag it from left to right. And I go to object fill in stroke and under stroke paint right here, 
I can adjust these two nodes. Just select them, and I use the color wheel. Make sure the opacity is 100% in both cases. So you can treat it like a regular stroke. And this is how you can create such a slinky inningscape. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.